And now, Thriller Thursdays on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. The Hawk Chronicles follow the adventures of Detective Kate Hawk, who went from a Baltimore police detective to intergalactic investigator, from fighting crime on the streets to crime in the stars. In the last episode of The Hawk Chronicles, meet Quan Kuo. He should be home for the next hour and a half. Good morning, Professor. I trust you slept well. The entire basis for this project comes from your planet from a man you are about to meet. Professor Lin, may I introduce... Nicola, this is not possible. Trust me, I have empathy for your situation, but you must accept your current condition. Good morning, Agent Barnes. It appears that Headquarters is quite happy with the work you have done here, and that they feel your talents would be best utilized back on Earth. Thanks for calling the law office of Merritt, Benson, and Windsor. This is Kelly. How may I direct your call? Kelly. My name's Ed Haynes with the American Embassy in Ontario. It's Dad. You have my father. Hey, Perkins. Got your message? Got a breakthrough in the case? Afraid not, Jim. Gleason is dead. Oh, hey. Hi. Aren't you from the restaurant? He's running back to the apartment. Oh, Mac. Calling the paramedic team. Don't bother. Cyanide? And now, episode 62, The Cookie Crumbles. The coroner has been dispatched and should be here within 20. Good. I notified my office, and they concur. We'll hold his body at the city morgue until we can make arrangements for an autopsy. Isn't that a little unusual? I mean, we all know exactly how he died. We witnessed it. It should be a simple autopsy. I agree with you. Trouble is, this is an extremely high-profile case with the missing professor. I think the feds involved want to follow this through from beginning to end. So just who is handling this investigation? Homeland Security? FBI? CIA? You know, this could get interesting, Mac. Certainly Homeland has an interest, because it can be construed as an act of terrorism. The FBI has an interest since it may involve kidnapping. And the CIA? Well, it involves communist China. And we have an interest because it happened in our jurisdiction. So, who's going to carry the ball on this one? For right now, we are. I'm here as a representative with Homeland. This is an active crime scene. And until someone with higher authority steps in, we continue. Let's give this place a good once-over before any of that happens. I'll start in the bedroom. I'll go to the car and get our evidence kit. Then take the front room here. I'll start in the bathroom and kitchen. Do you have gloves? Yeah, is there anything in particular you're hoping to find? I think what will help the most is anything you find in writing. Especially if it's in Chinese. All right. Let's get busy before company comes. When Zoka said that we had made the right decision, I heard you say... Maybe so, maybe not. Do you have uh, reservations? I have trusted the wrong people too many times. I let that Italian thief get away with stealing many of my patents. Everyone lost interest in me when he succeeded in what I was trying to do. Why did you not uh, stop him? Suddenly you had illegal grounds. I used all of my financial resources in building my energy beam generator. He was wealthy and had the best lawyers. There was no way I could have won. The ugly head of capitalism. In my country, you would have an equal representation for your case. In your country, I would probably not have had a case at all. Come, Nicola. Let us not bicker about politics. If it is any consolation, you have recently been credited for your work. The world now realizes It was you and not that Italian thief who first succeeded. It is of little consolation. My concern now is to continue my work and to provide our people with free and unlimited power. A noble task, yet you still are unsure. Look around you, Professor. Does it look like we have much of a choice? I would rather continue with my work than go back to that prison, or worse. So then... How can I be of assistance? You specialize in these electronic computing machines, do you not? That is what I do, sir. These machines... Computers. These computers. They are capable of many equation calculations at once? Millions. 
I could calculate the solution to every equation you have ever written in your lifetime in just seconds. That won't be necessary, Professor. I have already done that. Uh, I mean... Professor Lin, what I need is something to properly aim and align my beam with a receiver on Earth. I will need to know if we will be in geosynchronous orbit with the receiver. Or will we be targeting receiver as we orbit? That is technology well after my time. This will be up to Zokar and his people. Our first task is to target a stationary target on this planet. It will be line of sight. After that, we will deal with the curvature of this planet. His people will tell us if we are to use line of sight towers or these satellite objects. And who is developing the motor mechanism to move your projector? Over on the wall there you'll see a mounted map. Note the engineering section. I advise you to spend some time with them. Keep me informed on your progress. And please to do the same for me. Hey, hey Nate! King of the Wild Frontier. How's it going? <laughs> King of what? Uh, the Wild Frontier of Space. Where's the rest of your crew and captain? The skipper's with Sheena at Customs, getting final clearance. So, you guys are back in the saddle again. Okay, first I'm a king, now I'm in a saddle. That's a cowboy and horse thing, right? Uh, Originally, but now it just means you're getting back to what you used to do. Ah, I see. So do your people still get around on horses? Ah, In many parts of the world they do. Even in modern societies, there are those who choose the old, simple life. Sometimes I think that's not a bad idea. Ride into town, stop at the saloon for a drink, some cards and a plate of beans, and head over to the local hotel for a little... Oh, there, cowboy. Need to tell Rick to update your movie library. So, uh, when do you shove off? If you mean depart, in just a few minutes. So what are you doing here? Uh, The provost marshal just gave Lynn and her housing section an attaboy. You know, for their work exposing Gleason. Attaboy? She's a girl. That's a slang for an award. You need to come to Earth and brush up on your colloquialisms. You know, if it weren't 11 million light years from here, I might consider it. So you're sticking around to investigate Gleason? Gleason? Yeah, committed suicide. Figured as much. Those Hongans would rather die than face failure at home. That pretty much puts a ribbon on your case. What are you going to do now? Ah, headquarters wants me back on Earth. I've just been released for rehab and... Have no case here. Think you'll be back this way? Ha, with this rage threat looming, it's a sure bet. Then you and I can close Scully's one night. Now that's a colloquialism I can understand. Listen, buddy, take care. Do you know when you're leaving? I can stall for a couple of days, but not much more. Well, listen, I need to get back to the Mercury. Have that $20 million robot George send us an update when you get to the space station. Will do. I found a cell phone on the dresser. Nothing else seems to be out of order. It looks like he slept on top of the covers. Mac, see if there's anything interesting on the phone, and then bag it. You got it. Living room looks pretty clean. I didn't see anything unusual in the bathroom, so let's all concentrate on the kitchen. Mac, what's your first impression? Well, just looking at it, I'd say the guy's a little bit of a slob. Detective, how about the condition of his bedroom? Other than the covers being a little ruffled, everything's immaculate. And the living room? Clean. Nothing out of place. Yet the kitchen looks like your typical bachelor's pad. Hey, my kitchen is neat and tidy, but yeah, I see what you mean. I've been over to a couple of my buddies' places for card night, and it looked pretty bad. So why would someone who maintains a very neat house have such a messy kitchen? Maybe his passion's cooking. That's a possibility. He works as a delivery man for one of the best Chinese restaurants in Baltimore. He might be an inspiring chef. Except I don't know any chef who doesn't take more pride in his kitchen. Exactly. I'm certain that employees get some meals there as part of their work arrangement. He really wouldn't need to do much cooking. Unless he was getting sick of eating Chinese. Look at these ingredients. All of these herbs, spices, and seasonings. Typical oriental flavorings. See if you can find a menu box or any handwritten menus. Is that your famous gut talking? Maybe a little. If I spent most of my days and nights delivering Chinese food to other people, I think I would take a break once in a while. Throw down a pizza or go get a hamburger. I wouldn't want to spend my free time cooking Chinese unless I was working on becoming a chef. So, why would an inspiring chef commit suicide, rather than answer a few questions from the police? If he was cooking anything else but Chinese food, I don't see it. 
Nothing here suggests any kind of drug manufacturing. We're obviously missing something here. What's left over in these dirty pots? Some kind of paste? Dough? There's spilled sugar on the counter and eggshells in this little drain basket. Fortune cookies. He's making fortune cookies. Correct me if I'm wrong, Agent Hawk, but don't most of these restaurants either make their own or buy them in bulk? They do. In fact, the cookies usually have a trademark from the company that makes them, as well as the fortune. If he's making fortune cookies, where are the fortunes? We might be getting a little ahead of ourselves. We are only assuming he's making cookies. You know, that would be a great way to sell crack or coke. Deliver a meal with a real special after-dinner fortune cookie. I'm not sure how that would work. They probably have more than one delivery man. If that's what they were doing, then I'm sure they'd work something out. But it's like you said, we're only assuming he's making cookies. Well, I don't know if he's making cookies, but he does have a very nice digital scale here. Do you think we should bring in our drug dog? No. I don't want to send up any flares just yet. We need to get what we can now, before the other agencies get involved. I'll sift through all these countertop containers. I'll check the freezer and fridge. And I'll cover all the usual hiding places. One of us should find something, since we caught him off guard. Let's hurry before the coroner gets here. Haynes, what have you got? I managed to contact our agent at Homeland. She told me that Kate is currently on a stakeout in Baltimore. She's working a case involving a missing Chinese professor. Is this an IDF case or Homeland? Both. It involves her old department. The SIS? Yes, she's working with Detective Hernandez and Officer Mack. I don't understand. What does the SIS have to do with missing persons? I asked our contact O'Neill the same question. Apparently someone on our side pulled some strings, knowing Kate would be working the case. So they got her old unit involved. Falls under their special investigation umbrella. At any rate, we're going to hold off your conference call until she's clear and back on station. Poor Kelly must be losing her mind. I've been in contact with her and I've appraised her of the situation. I'm sure she'll be fine. So, have you made any decisions on your future? Right now, my future is some well-deserved R&R. A little fishing, maybe dip a few crab nets and crank up the old Fender amp, see if I can remember any guitar riffs. Kelly and her family, are they going to continue staying at your house? It's plenty big enough. And to be honest, Mr. Haynes, I'm a little tired of solitary confinement. It'll be great to hear the grandkids splashing in the pool. Listen, I know the agency wants me to continue, but it's like I told the controller, I haven't made up my mind yet. Certainly, I'll be available to consult on certain matters. But for now, all I want is a little peace and relaxation. Sounds like a plan. You know, it might not be such a bad idea to have you there. I understand your daughter, Kelly, is a bit of a bulldog when it comes to getting answers. You'll be able to keep an eye on her? Well, Kelly's going to do what Kelly is going to do. I gave up long ago trying to stop her. But yes, I can keep a watch on her and steer her away from the whole IDF and alternative universe thing. Let's just hope she buys into your story. I'll be back when we get the word that Kate's available. Hopefully it'll be soon. Thanks, Ed. I'm not going anywhere. John, so good to see you. Simon, you're looking well. Please, pull up a chair. Well, it's good to see that some things haven't changed in the last two years. Two years? Has it been that long? I see the music and the ambiance hasn't changed either. And they still have the best steaks around. I took the liberty of ordering your usual. Thank you. So, how have you been? Other than the drama of the last few weeks, fine. And you? I suppose you could say the same. So, how serious is the threat from Lister? There's not very much intel yet, but we have to treat the threat seriously. Lister is at best unstable. I was most fortunate to be rescued from his captivity. Zokar is purely delusional now, though. Both of them were stable members of the IDF until the Rebel Uprising. I can understand Zokar's change. After all, he nearly died in the Battle of Zork Pass. Half of his brain was replaced with bionics, but Lister... Lister hungered for more control than the Federation was willing to give to a controller. His sector was under constant Rebel attack, and he took matters into his own hands. He became one of them. Now he plans to destroy everything the Federation stands for. By using Prisoner 310. You know that's highly classified. As is Professor Lin. 
Dear brother, it pains me to withhold information from you, but I am bound by the Federation. L let me assure you, all will be revealed at the proper time. We ourselves are not positive what Rage will do with 310 or Professor Lin. No one is to learn of Professor Lin. The time is not right. Tell that to Agent Barnes and Hawk. They already know more than I do. Then I suggest you gain control of your people, John. We need to find out exactly what Rage is doing with 310 and Lin. Very well, Simon. But do I need to remind you that it was you who first approached Hawk and brought her into the IDF? You know how she is. I need to give her something to chew on. You do what you have to do. Now, as for chewing on something, I believe our stakes are arriving. Malcolm! Well, I see that Agent Bonch is back to speaking clearly. What? I believe that the last thing Sir said to me was blah, blah, blah. Oh, that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, a little hitch in my translator. I see. Well, I'm glad you were able to fix that. Now, how may I assist you? Ah, it looks like I'm going to be heading home after all. Indeed you will be, Agent Barnes. I received a communication from 310 headquarters at Martin State. You will shuttle to the Boldebar Space Station at 0700 hours tomorrow and await further instructions. Let me guess, you're not just the hotel director. You actually run this whole place, don't you? I beg your pardon, sir? Ah, never mind. Say, uh, did I get any other messages? I'm sorry, sir. That was all. Are you expecting anything in particular? I haven't heard from Kate in a long time. I was wondering how the investigation on her end was going. Investigation, sir? This whole rage invasion thing. I couldn't say, sir. If you need a good meal reference or anything of that sort, I am at your service. Thanks, Malcolm. But I've had my fill of alien mystery burgers. I can't wait to sink my teeth into a double jumbo rhinosterhaus burger with fries and all the fixings. <laughs> mm. Certainly, sir. Sounds, um, delightful. Crime scene unit will be done in about another 30. They release the body to the coroner. He'll hold it until your coroner gets to him. There's no next of kin here, so we don't have to rush in that sense. All right. I'm going to call my supervisor and fill her in on the details. Can you guys get a ride back with one of the uniforms? Not a problem. What's our next move? We need to follow up with this waitress he was working with. The one we talked to at the restaurant? Yeah. Head to the restaurant and question the owner. And while you're there, see what you can find out about Cora's delivery schedule. Like, who decides which delivery driver makes deliveries. And try to get any info on why Cole might have been making fortune cookies. So, are you going to trust these two bulls in a china shop? <laughs> I think you two can handle it. Wait, who told you about that? Nelson, right? Well, he might have mentioned it. Let me tell you something about that guy. Are you familiar with the Roman god Janus? We get the month of January from him. He looks forward to the new year and simultaneously looks back... At the old year. <laughs> Two-faced. Love it. All right, we're on our way. Hey, what do you have? Quan Kuo, our delivery man, took cyanide when he saw us. He died in just seconds. I'm having the city morgue hold him. I figured our people would want to conduct the autopsy. Cyanide? Did you get anything from him before he died? No. By the time we broke down the door, he laughed at us, then did a face plant on the carpet. Your own M.E. Why am I not surprised? Well, there's one strange thing. His apartment was very well kept, except for the kitchen. We found spilled flour, sugar, and vanilla, extract on the counter, and eggshells. A mixing spoon had butter and a mixing bowl had dough residue. What's particularly odd about that? Those are the ingredients for fortune cookies. I know it's a long shot, but I sent Hernandez and Mac to investigate at the restaurant. Good work. Got the link. Thanks. Hey, Kelly. You see me okay? Yeah. I can't believe this. It's really him. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, I know. I didn't think this would ever happen. Wait. I think he's connecting. Hey, girls. 
Daddy. God. I can't believe it. It's really you. How are you? Are you okay? When will you get to come home? Whoa, slow down there, Tiger. We're just excited, Dad. You look well. Yeah, they must have treated you well in that prison. I've heard so many bad things about Turkish prison. I expected you to be all gaunt and tired looking. Six months ago, there was a political change. I think I was a problem with the new political powers to be, so they transferred me to a minimum security facility and took care of me. Well, that makes sense. That way they could deny the fact you were ever held. I guess that makes sense. When will you get here? They're flying me to lunch to for medical evals, and then I'll hop a Mac bag, probably either to Dover or Andrews. Just book a flight yourself. We'll pay for it. Look, kiddo, I want to get home as soon as possible, but I'm sure they want to do a psyche eval and more debriefing. We'll be together soon. And then I will want to know everything, Dad. Everything. Is this the beginning of Kelly's meddling? Why was Quo making his own fortune cookies? Where is the mysterious waitress? Is Barnes finally on his way home? Find out more in the next episode of the Hawk Chronicles, Home Again. Chauncey Haworth, Mark Slade, and Lothar Tuppen. The demented minds behind the Twisted Pulp Radio Hour bring you... Twisted Pulp Magazine. A journey beyond surreality to worlds you never knew or hoped existed. Worlds of the supernatural. Worlds of dark satire. Worlds of nightmarish futures. Twisted Pulp Magazine. If you thought the 21st century was weird enough already, think again. Twisted Pulp Magazine. A step beyond your grandfather's pulp. Available at digitalvaudeville.com. That's D I G I T A L V A U D E V I L L E dot com. Mm-hmm.